Good morning. It is Wednesday, the 18th of May. The UK's rate of inflation is predicted to reach its highest level in 40 years when figures are released in just the next few minutes. Yeah, now this is the official measure of the cost of living and it could show a rise of more than 9%, certainly around about 9% we're expecting. That would be in the year to April. And Nina is this morning at a fish market in Grimsby before us to get those numbers and interpret them for us. Good morning, Nina. How's, how's it looking? Yeah, good morning, John. Good morning, Sally. Indeed, in the last few moments, we have got those latest figures on inflation for the month of April at 9%, meaning that prices at that point in the year were 9% higher than they were a year earlier. To put it another way, your money is going 9% less far in the month of April than it was at that point earlier. Now, you don't need to be a scientist to work out why there was that leap in April. We saw our energy bills go up on average by 50 54% leading to that leap. But it was already happening, inflation at 5.5% in January, 6.2% in February, all the way up to 7% for March, continuing that upwards trajectory way beyond the target of the Bank of England, which is low at 2%. Where do we go from here? That is a big question for the economists at the moment. This is Miata who crunches the numbers. I think that's your official title. Good morning. Good morning. What happens now? People at home will be saying, I can't take much more than this. Well, look, I think, unfortunately, prices are likely to go up even further. We know that we're going to see another big spike in energy prices in the autumn. Food prices, we know, are still rising. So the squeeze is going to feel real and it's going to be here for a little bit while, longer. And it is millions of families it's, that will be struggling with the cost of everyday essentials. Who's feeling it most at the moment? We know it's families with at low incomes. We know this because they were already feeling the squeeze. Uh, they had to endure the pandemic. If you remember the chance that took that £1,000 off them last autumn. So families were already on the brink and they are seeing spiralling prices, the likes of which we have not seen for about three decades. So this is going to feel incredibly tough. And I think that's why every quarter is now turning to the Chancellor, turning to the Prime Minister saying, you've got to act. You've got to do more than you're doing now because the price rises are extraordinary and people cannot absorb them. The government saying it is listening, it's doing all it can. There has been uh, that £200 loan on energy bills, £150 relief in council tax. And actually the, the Bank of England is saying most of these forces are external. It's the war in Ukraine, it's the wholesale price of energy, it's manufacturing in China, the scarcity of resources pushing that. With that in mind, when will things normalise, do you think? Well, so the Bank of England is right that there are a lot of external factors coming into play. Pretty extraordinary shock. Right, It's not one of the mill stuff. We're expecting to see price rises at this level for at least another year and a half. The Bank of England is suggesting three years before we go back to normal, which is why when you have such extraordinary shocks, government has got to help. Yes, they're doing things, they're not doing nearly enough, and families up and down the country are telling them this because they're feeling it in their pockets. Important to say that ch the Chancellor did say earlier in the month he hasn't ruled out more support uh, for energy bills once the prices go up, and they are expected to go up again in the autumn. And in fact, the OBR, the Office of Budget Responsibility, which works closely with the government, has predicted we're about to see the biggest drop in living standards that we've seen since records began in the 1950s. And as we learned yesterday, a lot of how much you're feeling this will depend on your income and it will depend a lot on where you work. Those working in the private sector, particularly those with bonuses, are receiving income which is much higher than inflation. People in the public sector, those with state jobs, they're losing a lot more money because wages are not going up in those areas. As Miata was saying, this is expected to be a short, albeit very sharp shock in the economy, but it's going to take some time to bring inflation down to that 2% target. In the meantime, families are going to be feeling it. Nina, thank you very much indeed. So just to remind you of what Nina was saying there, just, just describing what's happening, we've just seen the fastest rise in the cost of living for the last four Good morning. It is Wednesday, the 18th of May. New figures published in the last hour by the Office for National Statistics show inflation hit 9%, a 40-year high in April. And now, higher fuel and food costs, as well as, of course, rising energy bills, have been driving up those prices. And Nina is getting some reaction to those numbers for us this morning in Grimsby. Hi, Nina. Yes, good morning from Grimsby Fish Market. Uh, we knew, didn't we, that that 9% figure was predicted, it was expected, but it takes a lot to take that in, to absorb that number. It's the highest number for a generation. What it means is that 
prices are 9% higher at this point in the year that they were at the same point a year earlier. Your money is going 9% less far. I just want you to show there's cod, cod here being skinned and filleted behind me. Have a little think about the journey that cod has taken since it was taken out of the Icelandic Ocean on a vessel that was guzzling fuel. It was put on a lorry, thank you, Sean, and brought here on a trolley, on a, on a lorry that was guzzling fuel. The workers here asking to be paid a little bit more. The chillers here and the ices are costing more to run. It's all happening. And then, it ha then the question to you is whether or not on a Friday night, because of your higher energy bills, do you fancy that fish supper? Do you fancy that chippy tea? Is it affordable? It's going Going in a circle that's driving costs up and that is why at the moment inflation is at nine percent meaning on averages prices are nine percent higher than they were this time last year that is the highest point that they've been at since 1982 have a think about that and that's because of the energy price cap that went up in april it went up by 54 percent on average coming close to nearly two thousand pounds and it doesn't matter whether you're Sean here filleting the fishes, it doesn't matter if you're a pensioner who's seen that frozen, it doesn't matter if you're a student trying to make your loan go a little bit further, everybody is feeling it at the moment, as Coletta Smith has been finding out. Shopping's like a tenner more sometimes per week. It just gets so much more expensive. Bread, I mean, that's gone up. I think the bread that I have has gone up about 50p. Kira is 19 and lives in Greater Manchester on her student loan and wages from her part-time job. But it's not easy. Before the student loan in April, I had £17 in my bank left. Nothing, no savings, no nothing. When it comes to affording shopping at the moment, how are you making ends meet? I shop less, so I shop every two weeks now. I try and get a big batch of chicken and then I'll freeze it all so it don't go out of date and then I'll make sure that I kind of split them up and make meals and maybe make like a batch meal. Kind of saw people doing this. And Kira has another trick too. And this is what these are, budget binders. Um, okay, so show me inside, show me inside, right. I want to see. So <laughs> this is long term. So she puts physical time notes time into time binder time pockets time for time each time type of saving time and time spending. Time. And if you get changed then, if you're spending any mm -hmm. of these, you know, tenors and you get a bit of change, that goes into these, into these, these massive pots? Yes. OK. So if I spend £7 of this uh, or £7 something, uh, the change will go into these. So the pounds all go into here and the silver and uh, copper all goes into there. So there's about £60 in there at the minute. So I'll basically wait until they get full or wait until they get to £100 or £150 and then that will go into my savings in my bank. In Castleford, saving is becoming increasingly hard. Cheryl and her husband both work full time, but with their energy bills bouncing up and up, the plan to buy their own family home is feeling more like a pipe dream. I'm constantly turning everything off at the switch. You know, every night we turn everything off. We ensure that we use a full dishwasher, full washing machine, like full load when we're washing. Um, so I'm sort of running out of ideas at the minute because I am doing everything I can to sort of keep my energy bills as low as possible. Um, but it is a battle and it seems that there's not really much more I can do at the minute. How does it feel to know that those bills are going up again in the autumn? There's nothing more that I can do. It's almost like I've come to the point where I've accepted that my savings are going to be less this, from going forward and that's just what I've got to do for now. Sky-high petrol and diesel prices are causing problems for Mike and Ev. They're making hard choices about how often they can afford to visit their children and grandchildren. The hotel prices have gone up, fuel prices have gone up, and from here, Stoke-on-Trent is 195 mile each way. That makes it very difficult for us to see our family on a regular basis because you, can't, you just can't afford it anymore. It's not there, the money's not there, the figures don't add up. As pensioners, everything is negative. There is no... The only positive we've got in life is we're happy. <laughs> we are happy, yeah. Those big drivers of inflation, fuel costs, food prices at every shop, and most of all, energy bills are all continuing to rise, limiting choices, dreams and budgets in every home. Coletta Smith, BBC News. Uh, we're just going to interrupt John for a moment. You can see just how busy he is. Uh, uh, fill it in a fish a minute there. Can I just pull you out here for one sec? I know you're dead busy. 
And um, I'm looking around and looking at the overheads in this place. Can you estimate how much they've gone up since energy bills have been? Well, I gather they've gone up 90% in this building, yeah. The water bills, uh, your electric bills, all the overheads, are, everything's gone up. You know, it's, I think the gap is finding it a bit of a struggle at the minute, you know. And what about you? You started this job a year ago, yeah. your first time filleting fish. Where are you feeling it at home? You know, with your bills going up and whatnot, you notice you, you've got less money every week, you know, uh, expendable cash every week out of your wages, you know, with, with your gas has gone up, your electric's gone up, everything's gone up in your house, you know, your petrol, everything. And you say you want to ring fence your treats because you want to keep them, but what are you having to sacrifice? Sacrifice him. Um, Weekend on a weekend we can't go out like we used to, you know, you know, for days out in the sun, you know. When you go food shopping, you know, it's you can't be, you can't buy the treats, your chocolate you used to, you know, you've got to be a bit more careful, that's all. Keep an eye on that. I'll let you get back to your Lovely. very Thank busy you very job. Much. Don't yes. let you fall behind. Thank you. Uh, Mietta is an economics expert who can hopefully give us a little bit of an inkling into where this stops, because we're looking, we've gone from 5.5% in January, we're heading up towards 10% potentially next month. Where does this stop? What can bring this down? Well, look, this is going to feel really painful for at least the next 18 months. We know that the price that we're seeing from energy is hitting families and the really important thing is it's low income families that are being squeezed because a big chunk of their family budgets go on energy so you know we've shown that actually one in three people are literally having to make day-to-day -day sacrifices to stay afloat so it's kind of feel painful which is why i think the government's going to step in and help at the bank of england the governor was said earlier this week 80 percent of these inflationary forces are outside of their control you're looking at manufacturing issues in china the war in Ukraine, wholesale energy prices, there's not a lot that they or the government can do. Well, there's not a lot that the Bank of England can do because in the end it can increase interest rates but it risks a recession if it does that. But there is stuff that the government can do. There's absolutely stuff the government can do. And at the top of my list is why not increase benefits? £15 billion boost would really help families who are being pushed over the brink at the moment. And then that windfall tax that's been called for in all quarters, do that, bear down on bills in the next 12 to 18 months, and then use that time to insulate millions of homes. A great homes upgrade, that's what we need. Thank you. We have heard from the Chancellor, actually, in the last hour. What he said is we cannot protect people completely from global challenges, but we are providing significant support where we can, pointing to that £350 in support for energy bills. He's hinted as well. He certainly hasn't written off that there could be more support coming towards the autumn. There will be pressure now to act. Bear in mind that people who are feeling inflation in particular are people who work in the public sector, people who have pensions. If they have less to spend, there's less going into the economy to trickle down and around. And that's where we get into that territory of the dreaded R word, recession. Indeed, Nina, for now, thank you very much indeed. Literally at the, the sharp end there.